Okay, good afternoon. Uh, we still have a few minutes before we get started. So uh, we're just signing in to the 45 minute yoga class for today's Tuesday afternoon. Um, the class doesn't require any equipment, so no equipment necessary, just yourself and a mat. If you, if you happen to have a yoga mat, if not, just a comfortable floor or surface beneath you will work. I think I lost reception there for a little bit, um, but the focus for today's class will be uh, on joint releasing movements. So we'll be working a lot on just the joints throughout the body, um, working through a nice little flow and then working on some spine mobility as well. But the focus will be with joint releasing. Uh, so we're about to get started. Um, I'm gonna make my way to my mat um, and then we will get started. way onto your mat uh, in a laying down position. So bringing the back body onto the earth. Just going to rest the head down. I want the soles of the feet to come down so that the knees are bent. And then arms to either side of the body, palms facing down. And then from here, you can even allow the eyes to soften here. Just take a moment to check in, see how your body's feeling today. So do a little body scan, notice where the head is, notice the neck and shoulders. Is there any tension there? Can you soften the shoulders to the earth? Notice the arms and the torso. Notice the natural curves your spine has as well. And how those rest against the mat or the earth beneath you. Notice the hips, the thighs, all the way to the soles of your feet. And then maybe if you'd like, you can do body scan, working your way from your feet. Maybe looking at little areas that you bypassed while you were doing your first body scan. Just notice how it feels, soften with the exhales. And then maybe begin to bring awareness now to your breath. <clears throat> begin to notice the inhales and exhales to the nose. Maybe you even begin to lengthen the breath just a little bit. So with every inhale, filling the lungs almost as if they're filling to their maximum capacity. And then with the exhale, let the lungs soften, rib cage soften, almost as if you're emptying the lungs completely on that last exhale. Inhaling deeply and just allowing the breath to move in and out through the nose for a few rounds. When you're ready, we're just gonna very slowly begin to release the joints in a very subtle motion. So we're just gonna begin to float the feet up and the legs up towards the sky. So you can point and flex the toes here, make a couple circular rotations with the ankles, counterclockwise and then count up oh, counterclockwise. And then you're gonna do the same thing with the arms. You're just gonna float the arms up. So the upper arms, biceps and triceps and the forearms are lifted, hands are up. And you're gonna do the same thing. So 
almost as if you're screwing on light bulbs, you're twisting your wrists around one way and then the other. And you're just allowing gravity to pull the circulation in the opposite direction, uh, which doesn't happen very often. And it can be very calming for our nervous system. So just allow the movements to be subtle. Maybe you want to sync them with your breath. So do a few rounds as you inhale, and then a few rounds as you exhale. Point and flex the feet, and then you can do the same thing with the palms. So allow the palms to face up and then down, and then maybe opening the hands, stretching the fingertips, stretching the toes, and then creating a fist with the hands and the feet. So just do that a few more times for three, for two, really clenching the fists and then releasing for one. Just hang here, let the body really hang almost as if you have strings on the palms of your fingers and your toes just kind of dangling in the air. Take a full cycle of breath here, deep inhale. And then as you exhale, just draw the knees in towards the body. Give yourself a hug, rock from side to side. Very subtle still, still starting off really slow. And you can rock forward and back if you wish to bring yourself up to a seated position. Or if that's too much for the spine, you're welcome to roll over to one side and press yourself up. When you make your way to your seated position, just going to come into a tabletop. So hands underneath the shoulders knees underneath the hips. And from here, we're just gonna uh, begin to bring movement, more movement into the hands and to the feet. So we're just gonna be stretching out the hand. I'm gonna show you how it's gonna be done in the air so you can get an idea, just because it's a little bit more challenging to see when my hands are on my mat. Um, but essentially, you're gonna bring the palms down, pressing into your mat. We're gonna do finger taps. So we're just gonna tap one finger at a time from each hand, and then we'll keep the rest of the palm pressed down. So we'll start off by pressing our hands down, start fingertips spread nice and wide, and then we'll start to tap our thumbs onto the earth. Only the thumbs, and then the rest of the four fingers on each of the hands stay rooted. So tap for three, two, one. And then we're going to root the thumb down and tap our pointer finger only. So we're going to tap, kind of like playing a piano, but you're only moving certain fingers at a time. So tapping the pointer for three, for two, in your tabletop position for one. Root the pointer down. Now we're only going to tap the middle finger. All the other fingers stay rooted. Gets more and more challenging as you move across your hand. So tapping the middle finger for three. For two, for one. This is where it starts to get funky. So all fingers rooted, set the ring finger on each hand. So sometimes I like to actually pitch a tent with my hand. So I'll just press my fingertips and then slowly bring the palms down. And then that kind of activation allows me to move my ring finger a bit more. So keep tapping your ring finger, even as funny as it is for three. For two, for one. So all four fingers rooted, and now we're just going to tap our pinky fingers on each hand. So tapping our pinky fingers. This one might feel a little bit easier. I think the ring one is the most challenging. So keep tapping for three, two, and one. So we're just going to press the palms down into the mat again. So be all 10 fingers are pressed. We're going to release the ankles and the tops of the feet here. So the, the toes are going to be curled underneath you so that the soles of the feet are facing the back wall behind you. You're just going to very slowly walk back so that the glutes begin to sit onto the heels. Hello. So we're just slowly starting class. We're just doing a little bit of joint releasing. Uh, we're going to bring the glutes to the heels. And then from here, while we're sitting onto the heels, we're just going to create a fist with the palms and then release. So we're going to do that for a count of 10. 
Uh, and then as we count down, I'm going to make my way quickly to the computer just to pin the screen. So we're stretching and releasing the hands for 10, for 9, for 8. Thanks for joining. For 7, for 6, for 5, for 4. So we're just Breathing your fist and releasing, and then putting onto the ankle to make it a little bit more sensation towards the end. And one. So we're all done here. We're going to come back into a tabletop position. We're going to stretch out the forearms and the wrists. So we're going to bring the fingertips facing towards our thighs, and the ankles, or the, sorry, not the ankles, the insides of the wrists are going to be facing the wall in front of us. So from here, this may feel a little bit more stronger as you start to move back. So just be aware of that because we all have different uh, range of motion and mobility. So you can bend the elbows slightly, but keep the palms rooted and then just kind of walk forward and back. If you'd like to still work on the ankles and the feet, you want to look to keep the toes curled. And then as you walk back, allow the glutes to aim towards the heels so that you're still Stretching out the feet, the wrists, and the ankles. We're just going to rock for three, for two, for one, and then hold here for a full cycle of breath. So deep inhale, deep exhale through the nose. Awesome. We're just going to flip our palms around, allow the fingertips to face in front of us now. And then from here, we're just going to really lengthen through the arms, bring the forearms down. So we're just coming into a, a puppy pose or kind of like a child's pose, but you can lift up off the kneecaps, press through the feet, bring the feet nice and wide, and you're just resting the forearms down. So you're really stretching up the calves here, pedal up the feet if needed. If it feels uncomfortable to be on the forearms, you can come on the palms, the hands, but I just thought we'd give those a break for now, just because we're still warming up the joints. So one more breath here, deep inhale, deep exhale. And then as you exhale, bring your knees down. We're gonna come into child's pose. So push the hips back towards the heels, arms nice and long out in front of you, forehead resting on your mat. So from here, we're gonna uh, bring a little bit of awareness to the shoulders. So take a nice deep inhale here through the nose. As you exhale, walk your hands over to the right side. So from here, you're pitching a tent with the hands. So the 10 fingertips are rooted, palms are lifted. And by walking both palms over to the right side, we're just stretching out the left side body. So you can actually bend the right arm a little bit and lengthen out to the left. So that you really feel that stretch. And we'll hold here for a couple breaths. And then just begin to notice where the shoulders are in space. So is one higher than the other? Can you kind of bring a sense of awareness of where they are in space and kind of level them out as needed so that they're in line with each other? Take another deep inhale here through the nose. And then as you exhale, you're going to walk the hands over through the center and then over to your left side. So this time, stretching up the right side body. So maybe bending the left arm slightly this time, really reaching out with the right arm so that you feel it all through the arm, the shoulder area, maybe down to the torso, all the way to the right hip. And then just take another full cycle of breath here into the nose and out. On your next inhale, you're just going to walk the hands to the center and then slowly rock through table, full inhale. As you exhale, lift through the knees, find downward facing dog. So pedal up the feet here if needed. Shake the head yes, shake the head no. Just assess how the body feels. Maybe it's your first downward dog of the day. And then when you're ready, look forward in between the palms, slowly walk or jump both feet forward, come into a forward fold. So similar to how we were hanging when we were laying down, we're doing the same thing to the upper body and the arms. Just allow them to hang like a rag doll. 
head hangs heavy here. Rock from side to side. You can grab onto opposite elbows here. Continue to breathe in and out through the nose. One more breath. And then very slowly uncurling the spine one at a time. Chin coming up last, making your way to standing. Ah, just shake the arms, shake the legs. Give yourself a little freestyle moment here. Yes. And then we're going to meet at the top of our mats or in a comfortable position in your home. And then from here, you're just going to take a nice deep inhale. Lift both arms overhead, maybe the palms touch. As you exhale, you're gonna come into that forward fold ahead, forward fold, just releasing the back body, bending the knees if you need to, and hangs heavy. Maybe the palms can rest on either side of the feet. And then bend the knees, maybe with every exhale, you draw the torso closer to the lower limbs. One more breath here. And then from here, again, we're just going to uncurl on your next inhale. Unwind, chin coming up last. Give yourself a little shake. Awesome. We're just going to bring in to bring a little bit more movement. So in this uh, next posture, we're not going to come to a full forward fold. We're just going to come to a 90 degree angle with the upper body. We're going to bring movement into the shoulders. So when you're ready, inhale, lift both arms up. As you exhale, bring the arms to a T-shaped position. You need to hinge from the hips until you come into a 90 degree angle. From here, bring the hands to the low back. So opening up that front chest, almost as if you're sliding the hands into imaginary back pockets. Elbows are aiming towards the sky. Take a full inhale here, full exhale. Bring the arms out on your next inhale into a T-shaped position, full inhale. Exhale here. On your next inhale, so like inhale, come all the way up, arms come up, maybe your gaze looks up as the palms touch. And slowly exhale, arms down. Ooh. Okay, we're gonna inhale, lift both arms up. We're gonna do that again. As you exhale, hinge from the hips, come into a 90 degree angle with the torso. Full inhale, full exhale through the nose, bring the palms to the back body, going to those imaginary pockets. Full inhale here, draw the abdomen in, full exhale. On your next inhale, begin to bring the arms out. Exhale here, kind of like um, airplane wings or wings of a bird. And then on your next inhale, inhale all the way up. Arms coming down. Awesome. We brought a little bit more movement to the spine, so let's bring some flows into it. Let's inhale, bring both arms up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, belly rises to a 90 degree angle. Hands to the shins. Allow the crown of the head to really reach forward, so you're lengthening through the spine here. Full inhale. Exhale, point the palms, walk or jump, both feet back into plank. Full inhale here. Lower the knees, belly, chest, and chin as you exhale down. Plant the palms underneath the shoulders, tuck to the feet rooted. Inhale, chest rises, heart shines forward. Exhale, coming down, rocking yourself through table or pressing yourself up, finding downward facing dog. And downward facing dog, take a full cycle of breath here. Deep inhale through the nose, deep exhale. On your next inhale, right leg is going to reach up towards the sky. Point the toes. You're going to bend that right knee and allow the right knee to, or sorry, the right heel to reach over to the left side. So you're opening up through that right side hip. From here, allow your hip and femur bone to create circular rotation. So just circular movements through the hips. Going clockwise and then counterclockwise. And when you're ready, bring that heel over to the left side, opening up. If Wild Thing is in your practice, you can go ahead and access Wild Thing now. Or if not, you can continue to create circular rotation with the hips. On your next inhale, you're going to come into three legged dog. Inhale, lift that right leg up towards the sky, point the toes. As you exhale, right foot comes forward in between the palms. Low lunge, descending the left knee. From here, we're going to bring an ankle stretch. 
into the body and then a little lunge. So we're just going to inhale, hands to the hips, torso lifts up. From here, you're going to push the glute back towards that left ankle and lengthen through the right leg. So you're getting stretched on the right hamstring, left ankle. Press through the palms here. Find a sense of buoyancy through the front of the chest. So heart shining forward for one more breath. Deep inhale. As you exhale, you're going to rock forward. Top of the foot behind you is going to rest onto the mat just to give it a little bit of a break. We're going to open up this right side hip here. So the left hand can stay planted onto the mat or can come, you can come over to the left hip. And then you're just going to gently open through the right side hip. So the thigh is going to open up, right knee opens up to the right side of the room. You can use the right hand if you'd like just as a little guide for a reminder by pressing it on the inner thigh to encourage that hip to open. And then over time, you can kind of lean forward into it so that you're also stretching the left corner of the hip. And bring the palm down again if you'd like for balance or not. And then slowly opening up the hip. Maybe you begin to incorporate a twist, kind of looking over to that right side and stay here if you'd like. That right foot may lift up a bit and that's okay. Just encourage it to stay rooted. If you're coming into that gentle twist and you want a little bit more of a challenge, maybe you begin to float that left leg back behind you, allowing the heel to come closer to the glute and then grabbing the foot with the right hand. Maybe one day looking past your right shoulder. So these moves are a lot slower and controlled, gives you an opportunity to kind of explore with your body, see where your body is at in each position. And then in the last few breaths, when you feel like you found your comfort, you kind of just hold in and allow the muscles to soften into that pose. So grabbing onto the foot isn't particularly necessary if you feel too much sensation, but just know that maybe over time, you're kind of just working on getting that heel closer to the glute. One more breath here. Let's curl the back toes behind us. Draw that right knee, right thigh back to the midline. And then from here, you're in your little lunge. Take a full inhale, plant the palms. As you exhale, step the right foot back into play. Full inhale here. Descend by lowering the knees, belly, chest, and chin. Shining the heart forward in baby cobra as you inhale. And then exhale, finding downward facing dog. Awesome. We're going to do the exact same thing on the left side this time. So in downward facing dog, we'll take a full inhale. As you exhale, left leg is going to reach back and up, point the toes. Opening up that left side hip here by bending the left knee. Left heel reaching over to the right side. And then from here, creating circular rotations with the hip one way and then the other. Again, if wild thing isn't your thing, you can go, go ahead and do wild thing now, opening up through the front side body and the hip, or continuing to do leg circles. And then when you're ready, on your next breath, plant the palms, come into three-legged dog, left leg reaches back and up, full inhale. As you exhale, left foot floats forward, coming into that low lunge. So again, we're gonna bring a little stretch into the left hamstring, right calf. So the right toes now this time are curled behind us. We're gonna walk the glutes back to that right heel as that left leg lengthens. And again, your range of motion may be very different. So you might be here, you might be further back, completely normal to kind of play around and see where you're at. And then, from here, you can bring integrity to the spine, let the palms down, find a steady gaze, left foot flex. Take two breaths here. One more breath. And then when you're ready, slowly walk the hands forward, coming back into that low lunge. We're gonna open up the left side hip this time. So you can bring the top of the right foot or the back leg behind you to rest onto your mat just to give the toes a break. And then again, your choice. 
You can widen your stance here. See how that feels by moving the foot out or in. Right palm can rest on the mat or on your right hip. And then again, when you're ready, opening up from the hip though. So allow the movement to come from the hip so that the knee follows where the hip goes. So the knee isn't doing the job, the hip is. And as you open up, you can bring the left hand to the inner left thigh, just as a reminder, leaning into that right corner of the hip as well. So this is really, there's a lot going on with the lower limbs. So we're moving the pelvis, the hips and the thighs. And then if you want, again, a little bit extra challenge, floating that right foot back behind you, maybe one day catching it with your left hand as the spine twists and then maybe one day you look past your right shoulder. Hold here for a full cycle of breath. And then as you exhale, release the foot if you were grabbing onto it, press both palms down, step the left foot back, full inhale and flank. As you exhale, knees, belly, chest and chin come down to the earth. Inhale, belly rises through baby cobra. Exhale, find downward facing dog. And downward facing dog will be here for two breaths. Breathing in and out through the nose. One more breath here. As you exhale, look forward in between the palms and then walk or jump both feet forward. Inhale, hands to the shins, belly rises halfway up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, all the way up to the standing arms come up. Exhale, hands to either side. Awesome. We're gonna come into another forward fold again. So much of what we were doing at the beginning when we were bringing movement to the spine, we're gonna bring the shoulders into the posture as well. So we're gonna take a nice deep inhale, bring the arms back around us, three to fist with the palms, and then root the fists down. So you can keep the elbows bent, providing that you're still keeping some range of motion and comfortability in the shoulders. Although over time, if you're able to lengthen the arms, Allow the fist to root down to the earth. From here, you're going to feel the expansion across the front of the chest. The shoulder blades are kind of reaching back, so they're almost touching along the back body. And then from here, take a nice deep inhale, widen your stance about hip distance. And then as you exhale, begin to hinge from the hips, fold forward. So you can bend the thighs here as much as they need to. Again, the fist that you created with the hands is going to aim up towards the sky. So this will really feel the stretch along the front side, body and the heart center. But over time, if this is too much for you, you're just allowing the fist to rest on the low back. And then over time, you're working your way up to lengthen the arms as well. Take a full inhale, full exhale here. On your next exhale, you're going to release the hands behind you. Bring the palm down, and you're going to use the peace fingers. I'm going to turn around to face you so that it's easier. You use the peace fingers in each hand to grab around the big toe. So from here in your wide stance, the peace fingers are underneath the big toe. The thumbs are clasping on top of the big toe. You're just going to bend the elbows to either side of the room. Head hangs heavy. And with the peace fingers grabbing around the big toe, you're able to press down with the big toe onto the fingers of the hands to create that counterbalance and then allow the fingertips to press up against the toes. So then you bring a whole integration along the upper body, the arms and the shoulder blades. Allow the head to hang heavy here. And then take two breaths. Maybe with every exhale, imagining that one day the head will reach your toes. One more breath. On your next inhale, release the feet, bring the hands to the shins, inhale, belly rises halfway up. Exhale, hold. Inhale, all up to standing arms, come up. Exhale, hands to either side. Awesome. We're gonna do one more posture in your standing series and then make our way to the floor. <laughs> The next posture is going to be tree pose with a little bit of a twist. <laughs> so we're going to do tree pose on the right side. So really root down to the left leg. The right sole of the foot can either come to rest towards the calf or the upper thigh. Whatever feels better for you. Maybe the toes are still resting on the mat. 
your choice. Just kind of play around with that. As long as it's not resting on the knee itself, so you're not dumping into your joints, um, that's great. So I think today my hip's feeling a little good. I'm gonna bring my foot, ooh, balance isn't that great. <laughs> I'm gonna bring the foot to the top of the left hip. Opening up the hip here, finding balance, and bringing the arms to either side. Hold here for one breath. Whoa. <laughs> Smile if you lose your balance, and then release. <laughs> we'll do the left side. When you're ready, root down to the right foot. When you're ready, left up fine, comfortable position. So kind of play around with that, see where it is today. When you found your steady pose, just kind of hold into it. And then arms to either side, maybe on this side. You float the arms up, your choice. Find a steady gaze for one more breath. And then when you're ready, arms come down, legs come down. Give yourself a moment of stillness in your standing position before you make your way to the earth. So just kind of hone in in some of the or equal standing posture. Just allow the arms to be on either side of the body. Almost like a conscious standing stillness. Do a quick little body scan from head to toe. Maybe assess how their shoulders and the neck feel now compared to the beginning of class. Notice the spine, the hips, all the way to the toes. Maybe doing another body scan, working your way from the feet all the way to your head. Just assessing and breathing. We spend so much time looking outward into our day and what's coming and what's going on. Not a lot of times we actually stop and just tune in on the inside. It's like, let's flip the remote around and let's, let's see what's happening within us. We can only really control this vessel. We can't really control anything else. When you're ready, so they open up the eyes. You make your way onto the mat, whichever way you'd like. If you'd like to process it through a sun salutation or a flow, and then make your way down, you can do that. We'll allow it for a few breaths so you have time. Or if you just simply want to make your way into a seated position and wait for us there, you are welcome to do so as well. Kind of your own little personal freestyle. You get to make your way to the earth or the mat. However you like. And we're all coming down into our seated position. And you're going to bring the legs out nice and long in front of us. Give them a nice little shake. And then when you're ready, we're just going to slowly inhale, lift both arms parallel to the earth or your mat. As you exhale, just hinge forward and drape the torso over the thighs. You can bend the knees as much as they need to, to allow for that to happen. And then find a sense of buoyancy through the front of the chest again, the heart center, almost as if those shoulder blades were reaching back again and the heart was shining abdomen drawn in here, find a steady gaze for two more breaths. Maybe looking past your toes for one more breath. On your next and exhale, unhinge and one. Awesome, we're gonna come into a twist. I'm gonna turn around to face you because it's a little easier to see and explain. So we're gonna bend the left leg and allow the left foot to rest behind the right calf. So the Right leg is gonna be bent, right sole rooted, and then the left leg kind of swoops in behind here. We're gonna come into a gentle twist. So we're gonna really root down with our left hand on the left side body or the left hip. Inhale, right arm comes up to the sky. Bring the right arm to the inner right thigh. So as you exhale, 
you reach forward until you can't reach anymore. And then slowly begin to wrap that right arm over the right shin. And then if it's in your mobility for today, maybe you even bring that arm to wrap around so that you come in for a bind and then both hands clasp along the right side of it. Kind of shine the heart forward here. If the hands don't clasp, that's okay. You can just let the right hand rest on the outer right thigh, left hand resting on the low back. And really belly drawn in, heart shining forward, really stretching out the shoulder area here. One more breath. And then if you're in a bind or not, just begin to release that right arm out in front of you, just like how we got into it. Inhale, right arm up. Exhale, right arm plant down to the right hip. And then we'll switch sides. So left foot roots down, right leg kind of swoops behind here. And then inhale, left arm comes up. As you exhale, left arm comes parallel to the earth, reaches forward until it can't reach anymore, and then it begins to bind. I'm gonna shine the heart forward here. One more breath. And if the hands are interlaced, you begin to release that. You begin to bring that left arm forward. Inhale as you come up. And then exhale, both arms come down. So we're just going to bring our legs nice and low against our mat. Then a little shake and shimmy if you'd like. The next posture is going to be bridge pose. And then we're just going to do thread the needle and make our way into Vasana, find a resting posture. So we're just going to make our way down into a laying down position for bridge. Uh, if wheel practice, or sorry, wheel poses in your practice, you're more than welcome to access wheel if you're able to do that safely and comfortably in your own home. Uh, if not, my instructions will be for bridge. We're just going to allow the soles of the feet to be rooted onto the mat, hands to either side of the body. And then from here, finding a nice comfortable position with the feet about hip distance, maybe the heels slightly further away from the glutes. Take a nice deep inhale, shoulder blades rooted. And then as you exhale, begin to lift the hips up towards the sky. So really pressing down through the soles of the feet and the palms, root down through the shoulder blades as you shine the belly and the hips up to the sky. If you'd like from here, you can begin to interlace the fingertips again behind the back body, creating a fist again. If the shoulder blades are rooted, you're shining that heart up. The chin is slightly tucked in here so that the back of the neck is still nice and long. Holding here for two more breaths, in and out through the nose. Press down through the outer edges of the pinky fingers onto your mat for one more breath. And then as you exhale, slowly bring the hips down. Awesome, we're gonna do thread the needle next. So we're gonna do the right side first. So the right side, or sorry, the left, uh, outside of the left ankle is gonna come onto the right thigh. Right foot stays rooted, being the shape of a figure four with the left leg. Stay here if you'd like, or for more depth, take a deep inhale, begin to lift that right foot up into a 90 degree angle for even more of a challenge. You can interlace the fingertips behind the right hamstring or over the right shin. Just encourage the shoulder blades to stay rooted and the back of the neck nice and long because the back of the neck here likes to hyperextend so that you can really reach for the lower limbs. Um, but it's not necessary because you can draw the lower limbs closer over time. Maybe with every exhale here, once you found that sweet, steady composure, you draw that right thigh closer. One more breath here. And then as you exhale, the fingertips are interlaced, release the hands, keep the left leg where it is, right foot comes down. Palms are gonna come out in a T-shaped position with the fingertips pressing down, like we're pitching that tent again. And then from here, take a nice deep inhale. We're going to come into a gentle twist, 
the left foot is going to reach over to the right side until it roots down to the earth. And then maybe if it's in the mobility in your upper body and your neck, you can look over to the left. So the opposite side of where your legs are. Take a full breath here. Shoulder blades rooted. Allow the shoulder blades to soften on your next exhale. And then as you inhale, pressing through the fingertips, draw the legs back to center, and then we'll switch sides. So the left foot comes down, outside of the right ankle, resting on the left thigh this time. And again, stay here if you'd like, or for more depth, begin to float that left foot up as the legs in a 90 degree angle. You can interlace the fingertips. And breathe in and out through the nose. Maybe you draw that left thigh closer in your last couple breaths as you exhale. One more breath here. And then when you're ready, left leg comes down. Right leg stays where it is. We're going to come into that supine twist on the other side. So you can bring the arms out again into a T-shaped position, or if not, you can bring them into cactus. Cactus is really nice because it kind of like allows the palms to face up and it brings a different movement into the shoulders because you're rotating them back and up. So I really like that because it opens up the front of the chest. But you can do them in the T-shape if that worked well for you as well. When you're ready, allow that right foot to reach over to the left side until it roots down to the earth or the mat beneath you. And then again, legs facing the left side, gentle twist of the upper body, you can look over to the right. Breathing in and out through the nose here. One more breath. And then at your own pace when you're ready, slowly rock through center. Legs come down, arms come down. Shavasana, final resting posture for corpse pose. Just allow your body to completely soften and melt into the mat beneath you. Arms nice and long, legs nice and long. Maybe you allow the eyes to soften here for the first time. I'm just going to make my way over quickly so I can make sure everything's okay. But in your Shavasana, just allow your body to begin to melt. Almost as if the muscles were beginning to melt off of the bone structure. And acknowledging that with every exhale, your body releases everything it no longer needs. You're more than welcome to stay in your dreamlike state in stillness in Shavasana. Uh, or if you'd like to join in on a quick meditation before we all go off into the rest of our day, you're welcome to do that as well. Uh, so if you're Choosing to join into the meditation, just roll over to your right side, keeping the eyes soft. Just press yourself up, make your way into a seated position. Again, not mandatory, completely optional. You know your body best. So you can stay in Shavasana as well if you'd like. If you're joining in the meditation, just come into a nice comfortable seat that works for you. Perhaps it's cross-legged, Perhaps legs nice and long. Um, so just beginning to plug the pelvis and the hip bones into the earth, almost as if you're plugging into Mother Nature beneath you. With the eyes closed, maybe you imagine that you feel the dampness of the earth. You know that the earth beneath you supports you with each and every breath. And plugged into the earth, begin to sense the spine, bringing awareness to it, allowing it to lengthen 
from the base of the earth all the way to the sky. So crown of the head reaching up. Notice where your mind goes with every thought that passes. And similar to when you're flipping channels on a TV, just flip the remote around and check in. How many times are you flipping your channel? And can you focus on your breath? It's always a constant challenge of figuring out what comes next and what is happening in the day around us and nothing you we've chosen this time for ourselves and our body and our breath life will resume after we continue but for now let's focus on your inhales and exhales to the nose notice how the breath moves through the body as you're plugged into the earth Almost as if our breath mimics the sounds of the ocean. And similar to every wave, it just washes what it no longer needs. To the own self purification. With every exhale, we release everything we no longer need. So we'll do a few sighs together before we end class, just letting it all go. So we'll exhale here naturally. Take a deep inhale through the nose, filling the lungs to their maximum capacity. When you feel like you can't inhale anymore, take one more little burst of air in and then sigh it all out. We do that three more times. You're in the comfort of your own home, so sigh as loud as you'd like. Deep inhale through the nose until you can't feel any more air and then Putting it all out. Two more. Deep inhale. Deep exhale out. One final time. Deep inhale. Filling the lungs. Exhale, sighing it out. See how the body feels. See how the mind feels when you're focused on your breath. And acknowledge that you can access that on or off your mat at any point in the day. Thank you for joining so, so much. It was a pleasure to be here with you, even if it's virtually. Uh, remember that Tuesday classes start at 3.30, Fridays at 11. Uh, so you're more than welcome to join in on either of the weeks. Um, I do like to start on time. So if you can check in right when class starts, that is awesome. Or even a few minutes before, that's great. It's greatly appreciated. Um, but yeah, until I see you all again next time, thank you for joining. Have a wonderful day. Um, I'll stay on for a couple minutes in case you have any questions, comments that during the rest of the day, namaste.